What is going on everyone? Today we have a huge project, so let's jump straight into it. Welcome back to Boundless. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today's project is a long-awaited castle. It'll be by far the biggest build of the world so far, and although I haven't yet figured out everything that will go inside the giant building, we'll probably move all of our storage here and probably leave some space for random machines and small farms. Today's video will focus on the straight up building of the castle, and I'll do a lot of the detailing and some of the interior design in next week's video, because as you can see, it's a pretty large project. On the last episode we built the Iron Forge, our automatic iron production farm, and it's been working great and will help us out a lot with all the iron we'll need for rails, hoppers, or whatever else. If you guys missed the build of the Iron Forge, I'll leave an annotation so you guys can check it out. The forge connects to the back of the castle as well, so maybe we'll be able to have some of the iron go straight from the forge to our main storage automatically. However, the main entrance is facing the rest of our base connected directly to the villager trading tree and in close proximity to our first project, the greenhouse. But anyways, we have a lot of building to do, so let's get started. The first step, and honestly one of the toughest, is the terraforming. This castle is going to be huge, and since our base is in a giant tree taiga biome, there really isn't much flat space. So after figuring out how large of an area I needed, I cut down all of the trees and flattened the land in a 55 by 40 area. Some of the flattened land ended up needing to extend over the surrounding river, so at some later point we'll have to reshape the river a bit and make the overhanging grass look a little bit more natural. However, the flattened space ended up fitting perfectly with some of the builds around it, and after clearing out the space, I outlined the build walls with stone and logs so keeping track of the castle dimensions would be a bit easier. That leads us to the building of the actual castle. Step 1 is building up the foundation for each of the buildings. In total, there will be four, or technically five, buildings that make up the castle. The main building on the lower right, the guard tower on the lower left, and then in the back there will be a long room as part of the foundation that will hold most likely most of the storage. And then on top of that room there will be two towers that I haven't yet figured out what to do with yet. The first step is to build the foundation of the back room and both towers up to seven blocks. For now I'm just using solid stone bricks, but in the future we'll add some extra details to break it up a bit. On the side, we're going to have a wooden overhang, which might have some extra villagers or maybe even some shop fronts. I then built the foundation of the front building up to the same 7 block height, and then filled in the roof and floor of the back building with some spruce slabs. An important part of the castle will be to have multiple platforms at different heights, that way you can kind of look up or down on the rest of the build. For the front room, there'll be an entrance next to the main gate, so I built a small arch before filling in the rest of the ceiling and floor with spruce slabs. A lot of the detail I'll be adding will be using stone brick. Even after finishing the build, I still haven't decided if I'll keep everything stone brick or add some extra blocks, so if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know on Twitter or in the comments. To make the front entrance look a bit nicer, I added some stone pillars and used some stairs and slabs to make everything look like it fit together better. For the top building I used spruce logs to outline the main building, and stripped oak logs for the walls to make the room stand out compared to the foundation. I also used cobble walls and spruce fence pillars around the outside, which not only adds detail, but also ties the castle style into the previous projects we've already finished, where we used the same block combination. The roof for the main room is kept pretty simple, just using a bunch of spruce stairs, and alternating spruce and stripped oak logs to cap off the sides of the roof. I added a bit of an overhang to the roof, but since the other three towers will be much taller, we don't need to add much detail to the roof because it would distract from the rest of the build. Last step was to put some extra windows onto the top of the roof to break up the large wall, along with some windows in the walls of the top building. 
The base design of the castle comes from another YouTuber's design, so if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial of how to build a similar style castle, I'll make sure to leave the link for you in the description. Next up is the guard tower. I started by building up the foundation up to the same 7 block height, except instead of filling in solid stone brick walls, I used cobblestone walls in one from the main outline, adding some depth to the wall and just breaking up the mass amount of solid stone brick. Then using some brick stairs and spruce logs, I added some extra details in the wall and making the tower look a little bit more supported. On the next level, I matched the style of the previous building by using spruce logs and stripped oak logs for the walls and outline. It's a good thing that we live in a spruce forest and have done a lot of mining with the silk touch pickaxe because this project is going to take a ton of resources. One super important part of this build was me remembering to use a stone cutter to make the stone brick stairs I used. For the first half of the build, I kind of forgot about it and just crafted them normally, which if you don't know, takes six stone bricks for just four stairs. However, by using the stone cutter, you get one stair per stone block, which means I low-key wasted a lot of stone brick by crafting them the normal way. Oops. On top of the logged room, I built an extra platform which will kind of be like the main oversight area of the tower. On top of that, I used some logs to support the rounded roof, which will resemble a bit more of what you'd expect for a castle tower. Using stairs, slabs, and blocks, I tried to curve the room to make it look as pointed as possible while still looking natural. I also added some walls and fences to make some spires poking out from the roof, along with a larger flagpole at the very top of the roof which will eventually hold one of the castle flags. While I'm doing some of the extra detailing, a quick reminder that somewhere in this video, there's a hidden emerald block. The first person to put the timestamp and location of the block will get VIP in the Twitch channel for a whole month. Last week's emerald block was found super quickly, so I made it a bit more difficult this time. After finishing up the guard tower, the next step was to build the castle wall that connects the tower to the back building. The design for this was pretty simple and just used some stone brick up to the same height as everything else, and added another segment of a wooden overhang that matched the style of the other side. For the wall segment, I also added a border which almost looks like spikes coming out from the side. This also kind of serves as the fencing so I guess you don't run off the side of the building. At this point, the build really started looking more like a castle, even if it meant I pretty much used all of the stone for my storage. back wall, we left some space for some extra segments to break up the back a bit. I rounded out the corners and added an archway for an opening. I'm not sure what we'll put in these little sections yet, but maybe we'll put a slime block launcher or even some water streams for an elevator to get from the bottom level to the top level. In between the two extra sections is where the back entrance for the castle will be. I used a ton of stone brick stairs and slabs to make an archway and just detail to make it look like a fit. The shape of the door looks super nice but it's a lot of stone brick. So I definitely think at some point I'll switch some blocks out uh, with something to just add a bit more detail and break things up a bit. This back entrance also worked out perfectly for the connection to the iron forge. One of my favorite things to do when building buildings is tie them together and just make everything look like it was built together as opposed to pieces built weeks apart. Even in just the couple weeks the series has been rolling, we already have a ton of cool builds that really look like they fit together and form a pretty cool base. Make sure to let me know what you guys think of the builds, or if you have any tips that you think might make things look even better.
Inside the walls of the castle, we're putting a large staircase that'll be the main way you can move from level to level. The staircase is pretty simple, just using some spruce stairs, but to make it stick out a bit more, I added a spiked roof, similar roof we used on the guard tower. There's a lot of floor space, both on the top, middle, and bottom layers, so I'll likely add some gardens, storage rooms, and hopefully something cool I can think of before next week's episode. One of the nicest things about this build is even though there is so much going on, each section of the castle still feels super open and leaves us a ton of room to add smaller projects in each section without making everything feel super crowded. Finally, we've made it to the last section of the castle, the two towers. I started by building a base similar to the guard tower, except this time each tower is a little bit thicker and it's circular, as opposed to the more box shape we used previously. Instead of doing this crazy design with the stairs and spruce logs, I opted for a more simple design with a small window and stairs to round out the window frame. One of the toughest things for me to do when building is not over detail. It's super easy when building something large to look at a small section and think it looks too plain, so you try to add a bunch of detail. But then when you back up and look at the build as a whole, sometimes less detail is the best kind of detail. That almost sounds like something a crazy psych teacher would say. But anyways, both towers are going to be exactly the same design. So I built both at the same time, switching between the two for each section. The next section is the wood section, where we will use, again, you guessed it, spruce logs and stripped oak logs. I may be crazy, but there is no better sound in the game than stripping logs. It's just so satisfying. I added some more pillars using the same cobble wall and spruce fence design, except this time, I extended the pillars all the way to the top of the next section. Since these towers are circular, I had to adjust the design a little bit to look more like a circle instead of it just turning into a square halfway up the tower. For the next section, I went a little bit more stone heavy using cobblestone pillars to create these taller windows that kind of made it feel a bit more open. Plus this height, the windows will let you look out and enjoy the pretty good view you can get of the base from either tower. Then on top of the pillars I added supports for the roof, which would pretty much just be a bigger version of the pointed wooden roof we used before. These roofs I left a bit simpler though since they are so high up, it's kind of hard to see any super small details anyways. Again I added some extra spires and a large flag pole on either side which will eventually hold the other two castle flags. With some finishing touches, that did it for the main bulk of the castle. There's still a lot of detailing and finishing work to do, but we're going to have to leave that for next week's episode. This is by far the biggest project I've built in vanilla in a pretty long time. All in all, it took me over 10 hours of recording slash building time, plus whatever amount of editing time it took as well. But the finished product is well worth it. I'd really appreciate if you guys would leave a like on the video, especially if you guys want to see some more of these bigger projects. Normally this is the point where I'd show you guys a cool flyover of the finished build, but I think the best thing to do is to wait it out until we throw some of the extra details in next week to do the build justice. So you're going to have to wait it out a week for that sweet cinematic. Overall, I love this build. It really brings our base to the next level and helps tie everything together too. I hope you guys enjoyed following the build process and definitely appreciate everyone that made it this far in the video. I'll see you guys next week for the finishing of the castle and our next project. Don't forget to hit the sub button, smash the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.